Oh, steady, steady, steady. Oh, we're talking about kettlebells. Yeah, kettlebells. Good evening, folks, and welcome back here to Team Mac Fitness Workshop for another video. Today, we're still going to talk about kettlebells. I've talked about them on this channel before and in other videos and we showed you how to do a, a, a kettlebell swing in a previous video. But well, I've actually got some questions as well um, and inquiries about like kettlebells that people have bought some and have got some over the last while and wondering like what else do you do with them apart from uh, the standard one that everybody sees people do which is a two handed swing. Well actually there is a variety of exercises so I'm just going to go through some of them today that you can learn. Some um, are a little bit harder than others, some have a little bit more kind of things to work on. Um, but like I said the main thing what people always do is a, a two-handed swing which is a great exercise. Um, there is a couple of components to that but as I said we've talked about that before so we just kind of briefly go across them. Um, it is um, a swing so remember it is a swing, it's not a frontal raise. And so you shouldn't really be using your shoulders to lift, lift up the kettlebell. So what it is, as it swings, the arms are just kind of guiding the kettlebell. But it is all about kind of um, a, a, what's known as a hip thrust. So you squeeze the glutes and you fire the kettlebell forward. And you drive your heels into the ground, you lock your knees back and you pop your hips forward. But you need to make sure you have some contact between your hips and your forearm because that's where the energy from your hip is going to transfer to your arm and that's what's actually going to drive the kettlebell up. So if you see on this kettlebell here, and we go to swing, And you'll see that it's actually the hips that drive it up. So that is the two-hand swing. Like I said, we've done a video on that before. But the variation of that is actually a one-handed swing. Uh, and so you can do if you, if you're doing it um, on an interval kind of thing, you can do maybe 20 seconds right, 20 seconds left, change up that way. The only difference is from a two-handed swing to one-hand swing is just the position of your hand and kettlebell and the kettlebell itself. So as you go to do one hand swing, your thumb will actually face um, behind you, okay? So you'll actually turn your thumb behind, so you'll see now that the handle of the kettlebell is actually in front. And as you swing behind, same idea, up and down. Now, the best thing to do is this other hand here is to get it going at the same time, and it does help you. Don't kind of put it on your hip, because it kind of throws your balance off a little bit, all right? And then like that, you can pop it down, switch over. Don't forget, thumb is face behind you, and we swing up and then same idea on that side. Now, so if you've practiced both a two-handed swing and a one-handed swing, then most of uh, the other variations of different exercises we can do actually comes from the swings. Uh, so you can, do, um, you can do a kettlebell clean, you can do a kettlebell snatch, and you can do high pulls is another one, and then you can also um, different positions then to work your legs. So what we'll do first is probably we'll show you maybe what a clean is, okay? So it actually comes from a one-handed swing, so that's why it's important to learn a one-handed swing. So once you pick that up, you'll take a one-handed swing, and you'll come in underneath it, okay? So it's important to drive the hand through. The hand is always diagonal across the body, so it's facing the other shoulder, because that's what's going to create the shelf for the kettlebell. So say now I didn't do that, and I swung it up, and didn't create the shelf, now what happens is that kettlebell is tilting you over, it's pushing your elbow in, and it's going to hurt either your elbow, your wrist, or your shoulder, because you can see the wrist is flexed back, okay? So the thing is, from one-handed, up, drive the hand through, and let it roll back in. What you don't want happening is, to go up too high, <coughs> and for it to bang down the back on top of you. We don't want that either, okay? Just flip it down, come up nice close to the body, and roll it in. The thing is, you kind of come in underneath the kettlebell and cushion it. You don't want to swing it out too much, so it's not big where you would be in a one-handed swing. It's actually come close to the body and roll it back in, and then you just roll it back. The technique of that is probably just to give it a little nudge with the shoulder, and, and as that comes, you'll actually roll it back down into position. So that will be a clean. Next one then is a little bit harder to get, and it's a snatch, okay? So this, once again, comes from a one-handed swing, but now, you're coming up, up over the body, you'll corkscrew it back down, and up again. So you can see at the top of that movement, my fingers are pointed out, and up, so you don't want to be holding on too tight because the kettlebell does have to roll around you. Now at the start you probably will get a little bit sore on the forearm from a little bit of friction and stuff, but make sure the kettlebell isn't actually banging against your arm. 
because you will then get bruised and your kind of your technique is going to be a little bit off that's what that kind of means because you all want to be able to roll your hand around the kettlebell so don't grip the handle too tight because that stops your hand rolling around the handle okay so then that's the clean the snatch the one hand swing and two hand swing then if you want to do some legs what you can do is you can once again pick the kettlebell up with the two hands and you're going to flip it Okay, now so it is important to get your two thumbs in here because that will stop the kettlebell coming back and hitting you. Hold it in nice and close to the body and squat down and back up. Okay, so that would be where you'd hold it for a squat. Now you can do what's known as the goblet squat as well. You can hold the weight down below here and you can squat down, tap it off the floor and back up. The only thing for that, it obviously depends kind of how long your arms and legs are because that might actually hit the floor before you hit the actual depth which you're meant to hit in the squat. Then for a lunge, what you're going to do is you'll actually clean it up into the rack position. And once you have it here, then you'll be able to kind of lunge out, push back, switch sides, down, and back up. No problem. Okay. So if there are a couple of exercises, and we'll probably come back to kettlebells again, because as I said in the previous videos. I really like kettlebells, they're a great thing to have, they're not too expensive and you can work nearly absolutely everything out of it. So there's just two lower body ones and some upper body ones that you can practice. We might come back to them and look maybe at the, the clean and the snatch in a little bit more detail and break them down a little bit more because they are quite complex movements. So stay tuned for that video. But it's most important to get your two handed swing and your one handed swing nailed down and get really good at that because as I said, the next two movements are going to come from that. So if you want to practice that and maybe try the, the clean and the snatch a little bit and then in a few weeks we'll come back and we'll really break those two movements down and we'll also show you maybe a uh, Turkish get up and around the world um, and then also a high pull on it then as well. But like I said, you have to get those two swings down first. Then with the legs, it's just about where you want to hold it. It's nice and comfortable there for a lunge, the lunge position and then if you want to do the goblet squat or the bottoms up squat, that's good as well and you get your legs worked too. Uh, so that's another video done, just to come back, recap on kettlebells and show you kind of a little bit more about them, that's not just about the two-handed swing. Um, but it is important to get that, that is the foundation movement for nearly all the upper body kind of exercises. And as I said, they're not too expensive and even with one kind of weight, you can do multiple things, change reps, sets, you can go for 20 on, 10 off seconds. It's, it's very, it's, there's lots of variation to it. And as I said, it, you could get one from between 20, maybe 50, 60 euro, depending on what weight you're going to get. And uh, usually kind of maybe to start off with, you probably be looking for an eight or 10, but it obviously depends on your experience and stuff as well. Uh, you could start maybe with a 14 or a 16 and then work your way up. It's kind of up yourself. But if you've never done kind of any kind of weight training before or kettlebells before, maybe start with a 10. Try not to go for maybe some places sell like twos and fours and sixes. Try not to get ones that are too light because what's going to happen is you're going to compensate for the movement and you will actually be able to frontal raise it. So the idea is to get one that is a little bit challenging, a nice little weight behind it. So you actually have to kind of force you into the right technique then because you will have to use your whole body to get that kettlebell swing up. Um, okay, that's it for today. Um, we'll catch you next week and hopefully maybe you'll go out and buy a kettlebell if you have one somewhere in um, the garage or whatever. Maybe you get it out and dust it off and try a few of them. Okay, until the next video, I'll chat to you then.